So Gregorio, if you want to start and introduce yourself and sure. let's start your lecture. Yeah, thank sure. You. Um, I apologize for the for the Zoom schizophrenia here. I'm I'm appearing twice, once because uh, I'm on my phone for the camera, and then my desktop my desktop camera is inexistent. So um, I'll just briefly introduce myself. Um, under normal circumstances, I would like to have this uh, lecture, quote unquote, as more of a conversation. So please feel free to interrupt me at any point if you have any questions, and I think. The project that I'm going to talk about, it dovetails quite nicely with Babel's project. Um, and uh, although geographically very distinct, uh, there are lots of similarities. So if any of you find that you have questions to ask Babel, don't, don't hesitate. I think it's a, uh, it's, they're interrelated in strange and interesting ways. Um, if somebody could please free the, the desktop so that I could share mine. Okay, so can everybody see the, uh, yes, I can see that. Good, I'm going to switch off my video and go to the presentation. So I'm going to talk about a project that we realized in 2017, Park macht Platz, and it was an exercise in uh, collaborative design, uh, the reimagination of public space, but it was also more than that. It was stemming from a series of conversations between colleagues um, and is part of an ongoing uh, idea of trying to transform the process that architecture uh, is produced and creating collaborative structures where not only architects but also other professionals and individuals can come in contact with each other. So PARC, um, short for PARC Mach Platz, which is the project itself, is a prototype. It deals uh, with a new approach towards work, um, work being redefined as a mode of production and social exchange, um, separate from how we understand work as labor. It was constructed as a temporary installation. It occupied, for those of you who are familiar with Vienna, uh, a portion of Vienna's Naschmarkt at the very end. I'll come to that in a second. Um, it reactivates this portion of parking lot into a non-commercial uh, place of social exchange. And it was um, a place where we tried to host a, a variety of programs um, that uh, activated these constructions in unpredictable ways. Um, it's important to note that the design, the financing, the permit process, the construction, and the programming of the installation were all part of the project of a group called Team Veen. So we'll begin with Team Veen. Um, who is this constellation of actors? We are a group of designers, of architects, graphic designers, event planners, artists, um, uh, urbanists that uh, came together and um, started meeting. Uh, it started actually with a group of architects and we, we, we started a, 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 a weekly um, meeting trying to figure out how we could collaborate and share resources. It started well with simple questions like, do you have a good plumber that I could use for a project? Or do you know a good electrician? And then we started to think about um, the, the ways in which the acquisition of projects, the realization of ideas happens outside of the commission, which means the competition in an Austrian context. We are all very familiar with the process of competition. You put these three, 400 hours of work into an open competition, and the chances are quite low that you will get it. So we thought, what are other possibilities to circumvent the competition process and allow that architects whose professional training ostensibly really is about um, materializing uh, spatial practices, um, uh, thinking about the city, uh, thinking about public space, how do we do that by circumventing the competition process where the city asks the body of designers or architects to participate in X, Y uh, problem. What if we actually start asking the questions from the beginning? So the project is going to be presented in four acts. Um, they're not necessarily sequential or chronological, but they are distinct from one another, although they're interconnected. And the first one is design. So we talked about the Nachmarkt, and I'm sure some of you uh, are familiar with Vienna. So if you see, um, my mouse cursor is pointing to the, to the urban core, and the old Vienna River, which flows southwest, 
is partially covered. This is an Otto Wagner infrastructural project where there's a, one, of Vienna's, uh, one of Europe's largest open air markets, the Nashmark. Strangely enough, this, this, this marketplace, which has become a, a, a tourist hub, um, a center of activity, at the far end of it, there's a parking lot. Half of that parking lot every Sunday is activated by a flea market, also buzzing with life, filled with tourists. I mean, now in our COVID reality, it's less so. And then there is a section of this parking lot, which is almost always empty. I had the good fortune of living right here and would cross it almost daily and would note, wow, this is this amazing place in the middle of the city, surrounded by this, by this uh, skyline of 19th century um, buildings, and it's 30% occupied. And this is an actual um, figure that the government provided us. The, the, the parking lot is at maximum 30% occupied. So we thought this would be a perfect place to think about uh, uh, this proactive um, uh, installation between a collaborative co collaboration of, of not like-minded but equally motivated individuals. And as you can see, um, there were long nights, long discussions, and uh, difficult to agree. Um, I'm going to share very briefly this design process, which started somewhat ambitiously. There, were, there was no budget, there was no client, there was a site, and there was, a, there was an idea of what to do. And of course, this untethered design process can go in many different ways. It can go from the infrastructural, these are table sketches that we would meet, um, to the uh, performative, um, the modular, uh, and then individually to the absurd, um, uh, we, we started to come up with things that were, that were very far-fetched. And for a series of months, we just speculated. It was a, it was a way to, to, to not only collaborate, to come together, um, but also to, to, to flex uh, uh, our, our design muscles and our ideas. But it just so happened that there arose an opportunity for real implementation. This was 2017, um, when we were asked by the, the MAC, the Museum of Applied Arts, uh, to be a participant in their Biennale, um, a quote-unquote demonstrator. Um, and this provided us the impetus to say, okay, we're actually going to have to do something on site. What is it exactly? This is around one of the many roundtable discussions where we have a structural engineer with us, we have uh, uh, representatives of the city, and we're struggling to find out not only what does this thing look like, but how do we finance it? How do we get the permits for it? And what happens when and if we actually build it? So that I'm giving you a glimpse of what these four acts comprise of. So we finally settle on a design. The design is based on a modular timber construction. Um, it is meant to be a, a place where um, a very open idea of programming can occur. We've settled that the program will happen during the course of three weeks. It's limited to three weeks, late August, early September. Um, and uh, that we would finance it entirely ourselves. So this is entering the second act, the financing. It's very rare that architects are put in the position to finance their own projects. And um, going back again to Otto Wagner, um, uh, there was recently a very good exhibit uh, about him in Vienna. And in a way, he's, a, he's this proto-architect developer, um, very much in the line of shop architects in New York who are not only designing their buildings, but they're finding out um, formulas and parameters to uh, bring the architect back into the picture in terms of um, the developer or the, the, the stakeholder of the project itself. Um, so we came up with an idea of beginning our financing through, um, through a crowdfunding, crowdsourcing, crowdfunding strategy. And so um, we were able to raise 15,000 euros through this crowdfunding. And so the part of the design from the very beginning became an act of persuasion, um, how to get people involved. And uh, we had to come to terms with the realization that our uh, looking for precedents, we were looking at projects in New York, this famous swimming pool that they're trying to fund in the, in the Hudson, um, in the East River rather. We had to come to terms with the fact, with the, with the economies of scale and the particular realities of trying to do this in Vienna. So we knew that we were very limited. So a lot of our initial design sketches, which were fantastical, really, were brought down to life by the scales of the crowdfunding. So I'm actually going to try and show you a little video. Okay, let's see.
Can everybody hear the video? Sorry, just want to make sure. Is it audible? It's because I don't hear it somehow. It's not. Um, we only see the photo and like the film. Not the. Okay. Oh, I know what to do. Sorry. One moment, please. Let's see. Give me a second. Hmm. Well, you'll have to see it without the audio and get a glimpse of what um, the what we were advertising. You can read the, the subtitles at the very least. So this video was something that we produced ourselves, filmed ourselves, edited ourselves, and used as a, as a strategy to get uh, money, financing for the project. Um, strangely enough, uh, Bebo, when you answered about the budget of the, of the marketplace, this is almost a parallel, direct parallel here. We needed to raise 30,000 euros in funds for this project as well. Um, so again, it was a series of an act of persuasion uh, 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 that, was, that brings architects to um, situations that we're normally, that's normally not part of our milieu. So you see here that this, this uh, modular system, the, the way that people were supposed to buy into this project is that they could not only donate to the project, but they could also uh, buy particular, donate particular things. So by donating a series of catalog of things, whether it's a swimming pool or a plant or a or a seat, the actual outcome of the project would look, uh, would be a, a kind of index of, 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 the, of the crowdfunding itself. So the construction had a series of hiccups and, and, and compromises. Um, we were only able to raise 15,000 euros from the crowdfunding, so we knew that we were uh, facing serious financing problems. Um, we received additional funds from the um, from the Biennale and we were able to receive sponsoring from the Austrian wood industry. Um, nevertheless, the city was very ambivalent as to what it was that we're doing. Um, it, was it a sculpture? Was it a pavilion? Uh, what, how, how would we deal with issues of liability? Where, ha where could we get electricity and water since this was an, uh, um, a parking lot? Um, this interface between between uh, infrastructure and and art in a sense um, and use and public use was very complicated it took months for us to simply get the approval to be able to plug into the uh, electrical grid of the city um, with uh, Stockstrom within the, and that we could use to 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 power um, uh, the limited electronic um, uh, need for for the installation nevertheless we got our permits and we started to construct it was important for us that we Partially that we also build the construction ourselves, but that we would engage with um, the broader community uh, in this act of construction. So we collaborated with an org organization called Mutenfeder, which uh, engages with um, uh, refugees that have arrived to Austria that have a particular set of skills. And most of them had worked in their previous homelands as electricians or as uh, um, carpenters. Um, and together with Mutenfeder, we had to produce, um, uh, I had to, we had to produce a series of documents that were both legible um, uh, to us, but also to um, uh, the volunteers that helped us in this project. So um, we, over the course of three weeks, this combined motley crew of uh, artists and graphic designers, architects, uh, volunteers, um, uh, and refugees um, constructed the, the, the site. I'm going to go relatively fast through the images. And again, please interrupt me if you have any questions. When it was finally built, it was a bit phased. So when this first part of the pavilion was finally built, we realized or we knew already in advance that this was, again, um, only a fraction of what we were doing. Um, the, the construction, the financing, we had almost we had created these, these, these timber uh, modules, but still needed to find ways to program them. And this goes to the core of the, prob of the problem, really, is how do you activate public space, or what we 
commonly understand a, to be public space, without the crutch or without the, re, the reliance on, on the one hand, leisure or consumerism, commerce. How could we engage with the population to interact and interface with these constructions based on a series of activities um, uh, that could produce results that were not determined by a time off, a walk in the park, or a, a, a shopping spree. And so, and so the designing of the programming was um, equally weighed. Again, these four acts are e all equally weighed, equally proportional aspects to, um, to the project. And so uh, not only was the crowdfunding an act of communication and, and, and broadcasting and persuasion, the programming was also uh, a similar um, process. We did not want to programming, program the project ourselves. It was our desire to create a series of platforms on the one hand, Facebook, on our website, to invite people to um, uh, uh, come up with their own ideas. So in the early phase of the project, we designed this table in the first pavilion with a piece of plexi and markers. And over the course of a week, and there was a webcam that captured some of this footage, would ask people specific questions of how they would like the, the parking lot to be activated, uh, uh, knowing that there is a, a, an infrastructure in place. There would be a small kitchen, a little bar, there'd be access to electricity, there'd be access to water, there'd be seating. Um, so eventually this three week process was programmed into three large, let's say meta categories. And the first one was building. Building not necessarily what we had already built, but the act of building uh, uh, as a communal act, as a community act. So the furniture that was, that was provided for this uh, workshop was actually built by the people that came. Originally, the idea is that if you would build two of these modules, you could take one home uh, when the event closed uh, three weeks afterwards. Um, it became incredibly popular with children. There were also um, uh, open dinners that you could, on the website or through social media, uh, um, apply for. Uh, and and um, uh, friends of ours from the gastronomy uh, community uh, provided the the uh, the menu, and you would sit in a large table surrounded by friends and strangers um, in the middle of a parking lot. So again, that kind of reactivation of public space. There would be open mics where people could ad lib and uh, read excerpts from their favorite poetry books. Um, a beatbox. There were ping pong tournaments, um, music. So. The second week was focused on print, so there was always a kind of activation on silkscreen printing where the same furniture pieces were then printed on. This initial activator would always splinter out and bifurcate into other kinds of programs that were sometimes of our design, sometimes of, of, of um, uh, suggestions from the, from the outside public. And the third week was focused on discourse. It was really a retro, a, a kind of a moment to, to, to think back on the previous two weeks and to, and to think ahead. And we um, collaborated with, uh, with a series of organizations who come up to curate a symposium um, that questioned the future of public space, the future of the architectural project, and how these kind of interstitial underused spaces could be used in future scenarios with the product of that particular um, uh, talk, uh, a, a book that was produced. So again, um, this project, which occurred over the course of three weeks in late October, late August, early September, was effectively the result of months and months and months of collaborative work. Um, what seems here to be a somewhat uh, pragmatic um, uh, easily constructed timber structure in the middle of a parking lot was actually much more than that. It was motivating the city to, to do something that was out of its comfort zone. It was motivating the population to pay into something that wasn't giving the usual rewards of commerce or leisure. And it was kind of uh, negotiating within ourselves what the, what, the, what the sort of framework of the design process is. Um, um, it was also uh, uh, directly participating in a, in a construction process that was not based on a profit-oriented um, uh, strategy. Um, so all of these things that are intertwined over actually a span of a year emerged as a three-week experiment on a parking lot. And um, it leaves a lot of open questions. So thinking ahead for me and for us and, and Team Bean, um, and this is a recent photograph of the, of the parking lot. Um, it's returned to its previous state of um, an unused horizon 
surrounded by these beautiful buildings in the center of the city. And I don't look at this, although the sky is pretty dour and, and sad. Actually, there is something quite positive uh, uh, in looking at this parking lot, which I cross very often, but also looking at a lot of other spaces in the city that if the collaboration, the coordination is smooth and the ambitions are galvanized, that there is, there should be a, a potential future for um, the architectural project to move beyond its traditional orientation and for architects to come together to reactivate their cities in microscopic um, uh, acupunctural ways that can have and can ripple and have larger effects if these things are happening in concert with each other. As an anecdote, to close this um, short talk, um, if you look at our, if you look at our, um, uh, uh, our graphics and the identity of the project, the colors, the sort of trendy pastels to be kind of self-critical, um, a year later, after we finished Park Machplatz, and uh, it was uh, success seen successfully within the community as a successful crowdfunding campaign, as a successful series of events, something that remained in people's memory. A year later, IKEA um, uh, was already planning to move into um, uh, the area around Westbahnhof in Vienna. And they launched a campaign for a community event that was all but in name. A, a complete replica of what we had done with Park Machplatz. So um, on the one hand, we were irate. We were, we were extremely mad that, that, we, had been, that we had been copied um, and, and that our ideas had been completely co-opted by the man, by the corporation. But on the other hand, it showed us how provocative and, per, and, and persuasive um, some of these microscopic uh, architectural and design um, uh, campaigns uh, can be. Um, and with that, I, uh, I am open for questions. Thank you very much, Gregorio. It's super inspiration for us, I mean, for everyone. I mean, like, and hitting what we want, actually. I mean, like, especially. And also, I have one question before. I mean, like, uh, regard to involving the community, because also you mentioned that's also the refugee and the community they participate to build it. How did you make this processing? I mean, like, how did you motivate them, for example, to let them to well, build something? We had the good fortune of working with with Newton Feta, which is uh, um, which uh, is the outspring of a previous organization that has a longer history of uh, working directly with refugees, and the um, and we. Uh, parts of the members of Team Bean have worked with Newton Feda before on other community projects. And so the relationship was there from the beginning. Um, it was, you know, there were certain aspects of the construction that we couldn't and didn't want to do ourselves. So from the beginning, we knew that we didn't want to deal with a carpenter um, where we would have to pay him a fee. Um, uh, we wanted to deal with, a, with an NGO uh, uh, that could kind of work into this more cyclical um, a series of relationships. Yeah. Okay, that's nice. Interesting. I, yeah, I have a question. Um, did, you, did you ever consider to, um, to set up this um, intervention somewhere else in Vienna? Because for me, it's very interesting that it's quite, um, it, it's very contextual. Like, it really is made for this place, but it's all, it also has a prototypical um, aspect and could wonderfully serve other events and locations in Vienna. Mm. So did you ever try to sell it to the city of Vienna or find other festivals or formats to, to set it up a second time? We did. We, we considered what, what, you know, we had created this beast in a sense. Like we, 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 when, when, the, when the euphoria of this programming was coming to a close, we all realized, oh my gosh, what are we going to do with these, with these kilos of timber? And, and, and we have to take this apart and, and put it somewhere. Of course, we'd thought this through, but we were imagining that we'd need to find some storage out in the countryside and, 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 and find that we would maybe use this again for festivals. The city was not interested, neither was the museum. Um, and luckily enough, um, what happened at the end, almost towards the very end, an art collector uh, bought all of the pieces and has it in his private collection somewhere in the countryside. And so uh, the last document that we had to produce for, for Team Bean was a, was a construction manual for him. 
Yeah. So, Mahmoud, guys, like anyone like have question? Uh, I'm, I'm thankful for the lecture. So, I'm from my side. Um, uh, I didn't find to to I question for me to to ask it. It was very inform informative for me, and uh, also here in in Germany we we make uh, um, we 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 try to 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 use the space uh, um, as, a, as such a like. Um, we have up um, so this is maybe for me clear, uh, uh, easy to, to 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 describe it in German, but um, we can discuss it uh, in another time and give the time for, for other for another student. Or that is uh, possible to 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 discuss it in in German. No, of course. I mean, I, we would be happy to take questions later if you would want Just, to uh, email us questions. on the end of this lecture, but I would like to give the chance uh, for other students uh, from our side. Uh, I have a question. <laughs> Hello. Please, Anna. Um, because I, I actually enjoy these projects. I, it sort of reminds me of the Prinzessengarten in Berlin or a lot of things that um, I've, I've enjoyed from Raumlabor, but I always um, ask for the demographic that you are faced with in these projects because I know of, of friends of mine and things I've participated in that you always get this certain bubble of people that are willing to to get into these projects anyways and they sort of have this disconnect to the local populace. I don't know, maybe here in, in, mm. in an example was um, just recently in Altona, where the uh, friends of mine were in Wolfhofen, that they blocked the traffic in one of the shopping areas. And um, it was all done by this very, uh, how do I describe it? It's a certain group of people who are willing to partake and sort of antagonizes the locals a bit. And I always see myself faced with these things. I don't know if, if it was anything like this, but I, from the pictures, it looks like a certain bubble you have in in this project as well and if what's what's the general demographic uh, it was very question? it's a good question it's a good question the the where that um we were aware that popping or, or popping that bubble was was going to be a challenge from the beginning um when uh, looking at the modes of communication, you know there would be a certain demographic that's going to be uh, uh, um, online to to and willing to give to a crowdfunding. There's a certain demographic that is going to be part of, let's say, this larger uh, web of of, of of social media. Um, and there's also a demographic that is geographic, really, in this particular district. Um, uh, we knew that going on, and of course, there is a homogeneity in some ways to the demographic. Um, the question was, uh, can you find programs that would somehow bring a wider swath of people together? And we did find some things that worked. Um, but then it was more about, uh, let's say, a certain, if, if we were talking about um, uh, breadth or distribution in Vienna, it worked, but then it was really limited to age. Mm -hmm. So to cover all the bases at once was very difficult. It, this, this, this in no way became a larger representation of, uh, of the cross section of the, of the Viennese population, no. And at the end of the project, we realized, and we knew it already from the beginning, that, that this would be important to happen in, at, at the same time in other neighborhoods that have a very different, let's say, code, um, uh, a very different population, a very different a series of physical contexts. Um, but yes, you're absolutely right. You know, uh, in a way, this became kind of a, a soup, an alphabet soup of, of, of youth and, and hipsterdom. In some yes, way. I know. <laughs> that's the problem. Because the same yeah. thing happens in Hamburg. If we do something that's this, uh, the, the normal plumber won't partake, you always end up with this, this 
niche of but there's people an, who are doing fancy things and things. But I know. I but there's an oscillation. Stuff, but... There's an oscillation. There's a there's because we were in a very public place. The first five days were known known entities. So either people we knew or people that 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 knew people we knew. It was within these this very small degrees of of of, uh, of stages of separation. But then just because of exposure and because of the flea market and because of the market and because of traffic going by, you started to get a large group of people that are unexpected. And especially parents with children who wanted to make furniture. So we realized that, the, that if you have a particular program that is very, let's say, quote unquote, demographic, uh, democratic, um, that produce any kind of barrier optional barrier it's just a time and so one of our conclusions we, one of the things that we're trying to do with this project is come up with a series of guidelines a guidebook or a guideline for other people that would be that would want to do similar projects and one of the conclusions was that three weeks is not enough so we think that this this project needed to be there for three months the entire summer it needed to have moments where nothing was happening where people would think oh my god it's a totally a failure and then have moments where all of a sudden uh, uh, something would happen that was completely unexpected from a demographic that was completely unexpected. And we started noticing that towards the end where the families and the people who were setting up the flea markets, a lot of them, even from outside of Vienna, that were coming from miles and miles with their vans, would come and have their meals there. Mm -hmm. um, uh, would play tish tennis um, at some of the tournaments with us. So, but all in all, you're right. These become these become very hermetic, socially hermetic projects. And the challenge is to break that bubble. Yes, it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, um, so thank you. It was very good. Uh, the answer was very good for me, thank you. Thanks for the question. It was an important question. <laughs> No, you're right. I mean, just to say one more thing about this, you know, these are very, this is part of like our, 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 the architectural currency right now, whether you want to buy in it or not, uh, the idea of participation of, of, of collective work of the commons, um, of, of the new public space. These are all things that are, that are very active in our practice and in, and in discourse in the, in the academy. When they're applied, when you really want to um, uh, uh, disassociate yourself from the, let's say, orthodox structures of work, whether it's the city or the client-designer relationship, the commission, um, uh, if you, if, or the competition, if you want to really just do something yourself, you face the severe problems of duration of time, not only financing, but yes, audience. Audience mm -hmm. is really, really tricky. Yes. Yes, because I'm, I'm, I'm doing something, my thesis right now about this, and I'm really interested in this. Um, thanks a lot. <laughs> it's just a comment to you, if you do your thesis on that, I'm not, I don't know if you're familiar with, um, there had been an amazing project in Vienna by Peter Fattinger. It was called Add On, and that was a vertical intervention, which is like also referring to your comment, Gregorio, that you regret that it wasn't up for longer. Like this add-on project was um, a whole summer and it was also located in a neighborhood where, where there is more diversity and that was quite amazing to see. I'm going to look for that. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. I will stop sharing the screen now. So anyone like also have a question? Dr. Kinder, you are with us, you know? It seems she's away. Yes, as you are. I'm here. Thank you. Thank you for everything today. I think it's really interested. Uh, um, I don't have any things actually. It's uh, really important. Uh, and uh, thanks for uh, Barbel and Gregorio for this. I think it's really important for us and in somehow for the civil community and the, how to deal with it. It's uh, really interested. So many thanks.
So in this way, like if no one like have a question, maybe like Mahmoud, yeah. So like, thank you very much for your lecture, Barbara and Gregorio, and thank you for your time and for this inspiration lecture. And actually we're looking forward maybe like to meet you again, like soon to, uh, with this course also like to share what we have done so far.